moment you come into Christ, to begin to let you know, your life is in the world. <laughs> your life is in what? In the world. And the world is your life. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. <clears throat> From verse 45. Amen. Amen. Moses is ending his career. And the last will of a man is the most important thing, isn't it? And so Moses is ending his career. <coughs> what did he say to them? From verse 45. Moses finished speaking all these words to all Israel. Verse 46. And he said to them, Praise the Lord. And he said to them, Set your hearts. Oh, hallelujah. Set your heart on what? On all the words which are testified among you today. He said, set your heart for the moment. I want us to look at what God said in the secret of the city. What happens in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Who is to do the setting of the heart? Who is to set the heart? You. But it was not possible to set the old heart. You can't set stone. Amen. <laughs> you can't do what? You can't squeeze stone. Stone has no feeling. And that is why, as many as have not received a new heart, they don't have a conscience when they say what they do. They may be in church. And, you know, there is somebody, 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 I'm surprised and still shocked, the hardness of her heart. She just, she just had this. I don't care. Praise the Lord. And she's supposed to be a Christian with a testimony. But her heart is happy. You can't be born again and have the heart of stone. You may know the Bible in your head. That does not mean it's in your heart. Praise the Lord. Knowing the Bible in your head. Have you seen people that that took exam with uh, um, memorizing the children? What do you call it? Cramming. Cramming. They call it cramming. That's what I was doing. They grab all the things. Amen. They will, they will fill their head with all the, they will just, they, 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 some of them are saying that they even have photographic memory. When they see something, they photograph it. Praise the Lord. In the exam, they will just, they will walk out everything, everything. When the exam is over, you call them. The same question, do we sit around my hand and ask them? They say, I don't know it. It's not true, children. It's just for you to twist the question, just a little bit of twist of the question. Because they were programmed with that crime, the way it should come and the way they should write. Praise the Lord. And that is the problem with believers that has not been trained. They cram the scriptures, they quote the scriptures, but they don't leave it. And so when the devil comes with a twisted scripture, they will accept it as truth. You know why? Because the truth is not in them. Do you get it? The deep revelation. When, when the devil came to Jesus, they did not come with the scripture. They said, Fall down and worship me, but if they will give their child to find Fall down. Without revelation, you will fall down. Amen. Amen. So when Moses said, set your heart, that is where the work is. A new heart can be set. A new heart can be amended. A new heart, oh, is marvelous. You can, you can mold it, you can, 
You get it. Praise the Lord. If this the new heart that we set now, we set it well. We set the new heart on the word. Moses said to them, ah, set your heart on all the words which I describe among you today, which you shall command your children to be careful to observe. All the words of the Lord. He says, command your children. He didn't say, talk to your children. He didn't say, negotiate with your children. He said, what? Command your children. And that is why in church, in church, we are not supposed to only be preachers and teachers. We are supposed to be commanders. Command you into obedience. That is the reason why <clears throat> when you are going the wrong way, and the pastor so don't go that way. He's not supposed to plead with you. He's supposed to command you, don't go that way. I forbid you from doing that. And you say, hey, forbid me. Are you controlling my life? You are pastor supposed to control your life. If he doesn't, somebody else will control it. Are you hearing me? Have you seen people that got a girlfriend? And the guy said, mm, I want to come and beat me at 6 o'clock. He said, but take it, that's like, no, 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 I just want you to come and beat me. If you truly love me, if you say you truly love me, you'll come and beat me. He said, but why can't you take a dance and pay for it? You know, I just want to see you. You know, I like to see your face. You stupidly agree. What is she doing? She's commanding you. But she's manipulating you with witchcraft. Pastor will not manipulate you with you that. Pastor will not tell you, you know, if you, if you want to see your face, just come to church. You know, I love you. No, no, no. Don't do that. We we'll walk with the truth. And then you will dress up and you go and pick that small girl. You will pay the money. Amen. Amen. You have conditioned your heart to be controlled by her. That's what happened. Amen. Amen. You have conditioned your heart. Be controlled. And what Moses is saying to us also that in the same way, we can set our heart for the word of God to control us, for us to obey the word of God, for us to live the word of God. You see, when we talk about the word of God in our life, we must practice it early as soon as we get born again. But the problem is that people get born again, they don't practice it. Why? <clears throat> he says, 47, what did he say? It is not a futile thing for you. Ah, it is not what? A futile thing for you. Because the word is what? The word is not a futile thing for you. He tells us, as Moses was departing, he was ending his ministry. Moses was telling his ministry. He said to them, The word is not a future, it's not an entity. No. This word I'm speaking to you, which is what we have written. And I said to you, the written word takes us to the living word. The living word takes us to the living God. Praise the Lord. And it is all about the word. So when Moses said to them, the word is not futile to you, he says, Set your heart. Condition your heart. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There was a prayer I, I, I taught them in uni. And I said, that prayer, Lord, align my conscience with your spirit. And I thought we, we are praying it here. Yes, sir. Lord, program and align my conscience with your spirit. You don't know how important that prayer is. When you you know you know your phone is aligned with your bank account, isn't it? When something drops there, you are alerted, isn't it? Yes, sir. And sometimes you pray that something will drop. <laughs> is it not true? Yes, Even by mistake you pray. And then when it's at the end of the month, you look more intensely. 
Pastor should go down. What has ended? Praise the Lord. There's a lot you. You are expecting an alert at the end of the month, isn't it? Why? You have set your heart. But at the end of the month, something will alert. Something will come in, isn't it? Isn't it? So now, when you align my conscience with the Holy Spirit, when you are upstairs, you get an alert. When you speak wrongly, you get an alert. When you act wrongly, you get an alert. If there is one prayer beyond, Lord, let your will be done, the next best prayer I recommend for believers is that, Holy Spirit, align my conscience with your spirit. When I miss it, let me get an alert. I can't imagine when Christians do something wrong and you are correcting them and they argue. I can't get it. I can't. Bring it to church. And then just at the junction, the police stopped the, the van. And I told the guy, carry me. I said, wait, wait, I want to see what will happen. And so the driver, the person driving came out. And the policeman was just asking for nothing important. Nothing important. And so I waited after a while. I came out of the vehicle. And I went to him. I looked at him. I said, what is it, sir? He said, um, where is this going to? I said, we are going to church. He said, um, uh, where is this? Um, where is that? Uh, and I was looking at him. And I said to him, he was wearing his name on his uniform. I said to him, Emmanuel is your name. I said, Emmanuel is your name. We are going to church. Emmanuel, does that not touch you? He, maybe it didn't even dawn on him. Then he looked. He said, <laughs> he laughed. He said, um, okay, you push, you go. Are you hearing me? His name on his shirt, his name on his shirt, he is written Emmanuel boldly. And that means God is with him. God is with us. And here, Emmanuel was told that this vehicle is taking something to church. And Emmanuel wants to stop it for a bribe. And his name is Emmanuel. And his name is Emmanuel. This is, this is even a, a, a small thing. In the east, it's even worse. Praise the Lord. In the east, it's even terrible. For five naira, they can keep you for a whole day on the road. Such level of wickedness. And you will see their name. Chukuma, Chukudi, Chukusobe, Chukuiduz, Chukwemeka, Chukunonso, Chukuna. All the Chuku is on their uniform. And they are so wicked and mean. No, do I have a witness here? It's something that's beyond my comprehension. And very often I keep quiet. I ignore such people because there's no point arguing with you. Amen. If you don't place the word of God in a way to alert you, it means that over time the hardness of heart will return back to you. Because when you receive the new heart, it is a fertile ground. And what you're supposed to be doing there is to be planting, 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 planting word. What do you plant? The word. Meditate upon it. Chew the word. And then Moses said, it is not empty work you are doing when you, when you put the word in your spirit, put it in your spirit, put it in your spirit. He said, you are not here for that. He says, he says, it is your life you are building up. Amen. I want to show you something that will force you to start doing that by the grace of God. He says, it is all right. And by this word, and by this word, you shall do what? Prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to. Is that your word? Yes, sir. He says, with this word, you do what? Through long, long life, isn't it? Now, he says, 
Let's go. He says, this works. This works in the land they're going to possess. He tells us that, <coughs> excuse me, when we move into Zion, it's a different country altogether. When you get born again, we are transferred into Zion. Amen. Amen. We are catapulted from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. In the kingdom of his dear son, circumcision or around circumcision means nothing. What matters is the word of God in my life. Galatians say faith working through love. Amen. <coughs> faith working through love. So you can see that when we are a new creation, what we eat does not determine how long we live. Let's be scriptural about it. Praise the Lord. Whether we eat vegetable or fruit or not, it doesn't determine our life or the length of it. But in your old nature, in your old nature, because the world have wanted to offer you, they offered you something to make you believe that we have you live long. They say, don't eat sugar. They say, don't eat if you want to live long. If you want to live long, or if you want to live long. And there are people that have obeyed the person and still died at the age of 40. Amen. Now, the Bible says, well, of course, is the man that puts his trust in the arm of flesh. If you are in the new creation, and you still put your confidence that what you eat and what you do not eat will make you live long. You're wasting your time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, you're wasting your time. You need to understand that when you get born again, in Zion, it's not what you eat physically that determines the quality of your life. It is what you eat spiritually that determines the quality of your life. It is there. He said, by it, you will prolong your days. In the land you go into possess, in the new kingdom where you are born again, where we live, it is not what we eat, it is what we read. It's what we read. And so what you do? Give the word of God a prime place in your life. Give the word of God a practice world. Being born again is a transaction of the heart of stone being replaced with the heart of flesh. That's what the transaction is. And when you get the new heart, listen, the new heart only grows or nourished or maintained not by physical food, but by what? Spiritual, Spiritual food. The more you eat it, the better you become. The more you eat it, the longer you live. By the word, you can decide whether to live one place because we have a standard. God said to us in Genesis chapter 6, the number of days of man shall be what? Did this say the number of days of a Christian? That's not what he said. He said the number of days. I got a picture of, uh, of 107 women in Nigeria. She's 107. Amen. She looks very strong to me. She looks very strong to me. And so <clears throat> we have the maximum. God says 120. 120. Amen. Amen. But there was something that David said. David said the number of days of man will be what? 70 to 80. Or 70, something like that. Right? Now, that's what David said, and there's a reason why he said that. And many people take what David said, but I take what God said. Praise the Lord. There was a reason David wrote that in that song. There was a reason. But God himself said, God himself said, 120 shall be the number of days of man. And Moses lived 120. And the Bible said his eyes was not deep. Or his strength are better. At 120, he was still looking for more. Praise the Lord. Abraham at the age of 99 was still running. 
Abraham. And Abraham didn't have what we had. Praise the Lord. Amen. At the age of 99, he was still. Why is it that people are wearing glasses now at the age of 30, 40, 50, 60? You know why we didn't have the revelation? Because when it was coming, we would have fought it off. You understand? Remember also, he says, he says, and by this word, you, who will do it? You shall do what? Prolong your days. It is your fight. As soon as people get born again and come into Christ, we should tell them that they need to be fighting. Them. Not physical. He says, we wrestle not the flesh and blood. That's what Paul said, but we wrestle. We do wrestle. Praise the Lord. And so, but, but you know what we're, we have taught? I, I, I read one book. Oh, the, the, the man. I think it's uh, John Makata or something like that. He says, we have oversold the benefit of Christianity. He was the first person I had to say that, and he's very correct. He said, we have overmarketed the benefit of Christianity. Don't balance it. We don't balance it. Paul said that those that want to live righteous in this age will suffer many things. That's what Paul said. He was writing to Timothy as his son. He said, those that want to live godly in this life, he said, they will suffer many things. No, have you been told that? Maybe if you are told that, you won't get born again. So he told me to suffer many things as a righteous man. Let me stay with unrighteousness and I'll find my way. But set your heart. Character development starts from your heart. Character development starts from what? When you send your child to school, you will send him to learn everything afresh, isn't it? Even the way you have messed him up at home, you said when you get to school, they will learn. They will fix him. And so when we come to Christ, please, I want you to do an experiment. You may want again for so long and don't talk him and all that. I want you to do an experiment. Carry all you are and all you have been. Throw them away. Throw who he used to be away. It's never too late to make a change. Yes. Listen, give yourself, give yourself to this school. In the next six months, you will be amazed the glory of God in Singapore.